What is happening, fellow pioneers of human transportation? I'm Yogi Steve. This is ESA, the Electric Scooter Academy. You know I make videos about high-powered scooters, so I wanted to answer some questions and comments, and this video is going to be just about deliveries. So this is going to be all about deliveries, answering deliveries, questions, and comments, and here we go. GBQ asks me a good question. Have I been getting any cash tips lately? Haven't seen cash tips for at least six months. There was a time where I was getting a cash tip here and there, but it's not really common. Most people tip through the app. Explorer Steve DIY, cool name, says, I know it's a scooter channel, but how would a bike compare for deliveries? Any cons compared to a scooter? So if you're not a cyclist, I wouldn't take this up as a job on your bike. I would imagine you should already be into cycling before you consider being a bicycle courier. I just feel like your body won't be ready for it. You may not even like riding the bike. Who the hell knows? There's a lot of differences between a scooter and a bike, a lot of similarities. I mean, probably the umbrella is that in my mind, obviously on a bicycle you're pedaling, you can have an electrical bike, which is sort of the best of both worlds. Um, you know, if you set yourself up right on the bike or the scooter, they're both gonna have similar advantages. Maybe disadvantages are gonna be, I feel like there's more bicycle theft than scooter theft. You know, bicycle thieves have been around forever. Um, scooter thieves, I'm sure they exist but they don't specialize in bicycles, like stealing them and then reselling them quickly, getting rid of them. You know, these high-end scooters sort of stick out. There's, there's the obvious differences. The scooter has sort of a smaller profile. It's probably easier to bring your scooter into a building than it is a bicycle. The bicycle is sort of longer, takes up a little more space. Maybe the scooter is a little easier to manage in the elevator, but I'm sure a guy on a bike could tell you all the advantages of a bike. But I think a bike and a scooter are similar so long as you are set up properly. If I was to do deliveries on a bike, I would make sure I had a rack on the back so I'm not constantly bearing the weight of the box backpack on my back. I like the big scooters because I can fit the box right on my deck. How do you get your bag to stay on the scooter? I'm going to do a setup video. It's coming. And here's the dogs. Bungee cords. Hook one side, go underneath, underneath the deck, hook the other side, use four of them. That'll hold your box on really tight. Just be aware that over time the bungee cords will put pressure on the box and every six months I usually have to get a new one because the box slowly bends. This is sort of a delivery question because he's asking what do I do when my phone overheats? My phone only overheats out here in the worst part of the summer. Uh, if I have the phone on the phone holder facing a normal angle facing up or towards me as I'm driving, the screen catches a lot of heat and I've turned off the phone with overheats. The only solution is to put the phone in your pocket. It makes it very difficult because the advantage of the phone holder is you don't have to stop and pull over to look quickly at orders and directions. Having it in your pocket is a pain, but that's just what you have to do. It's better than having no phone at all when it overheats. Fadil Hussein, you've asked a couple questions and left some comments recently. I really appreciate it. I've seen a couple of your videos, wondered how I got started as a delivery driver and what made me choose the scooter. So, so we're not talking about scooters. I chose the Dualtron because everything before it broke. Come on, doggy. And the first part of that question was how I got started. You know, I just applied in 2019. I wanted to make some extra money. You know, I'm a full-time personal trainer and yoga teacher for like 20 years. And it's like running your own business. There's always a lot of stress as far as keeping new clients, new money coming in. So the deliveries were just a way for me to alleviate $500 a month pressure and make a little bit of extra money. But I started part-time, 2019, 2020, pandemic kicked in, probably lost half my students, half my clients, full-time last year. And now this year, I'm already, clients are coming back and I'm back to doing just part-time delivery work. So I just started by applying. You got to send your applications in, apply to every single company in your neighborhood and multi-app. Altan Apak asked me, what's the most I've made in an hour before the pandemic? For whatever reason, it was easier to have these kind of crazy moments where I'll get like a $50 payout sushi order that takes a half an hour. So the most I ever made in an hour is probably 50 or 60 bucks where I get some sort of a crazy single order that pays 40 or 50 bucks, a couple of other good orders within that hour, and I've made as much as 50 or 60 bucks. And if you remember correctly, some lady tipped me $50 for a pint of ice cream. There's a video out there. You know, I got a $50 cash tip for a pint of ice cream. I, I can't even believe it when I say it. That happened sometime last year. So $50 plus per hour, but I don't average that much. Right now we're doing like in the low $20, $22, $23 per hour range. It's still a pretty good rate. Ken Worth is asking, what is the name of the app that I use to track my miles? I use the Strava app, the free Strava app. So Arcadia is asking me what red flags I see when it comes to customers and orders. So... 
there's not really very many red flags except for maybe in an Uber order, the customer can, the customer can contact you very easily. So on Uber, if I take the order and the customer right away is texting me, I know if I want to, I should just get rid of that order. The customer is already impatient. I know I'm very quick. Occasionally Uber gives you a little note in the order that says this customer complained that in a previous order they were missing items. I usually choose to send those orders back to Uber, send it to my partner, because if the person is complaining that Chipotle forgot food, they're most likely full of shit. I Senvi, is that the right name? S-E-N-V-I, yeah. Says, I've seen another video where a guy on an e-bike was deactivated because he was going too fast. Yeah, look, if you work for Uber, they're tracking your speed. They don't want you to go faster than 25 miles per hour. I'm pretty sure 25 the last time I looked. I always stay in the low 20s. I have my scooter set for the low 20 mile per hour range, especially when Uber is on. Because what happens is, is I'm not doing anything really wrong. I'm not in a car, but people apply for Uber and they don't have a driver's license. They say they're going to be a bicycle courier and then they use their car instead. Uber can see them going 40, 50, 60 miles per hour and they deactivate those guys. So that line, the cutoff, I guess, on speed is for whatever reason, 25 miles per hour. So, so don't go faster than 23, 24, 25 miles per hour if you don't want to get deactivated off of Uber. <laughs> Whoa, relax. Neo Francois, right? N-E-O-F-R-A-N-C-O-I-S. Is that Francois? Is asking me, what type of scooter do I recommend for Uber Eats? It's a scooter question, so I'll just answer it very, very generally. Any scooter that you can fix. You can start on a very small scooter, a very big scooter, or a $300 Xiaomi, $3,000 Dualtron, doesn't matter. So long as when it goes down, you can fix it, because these scooters aren't really made for commercial use for the serious, serious high mileage use, so cheap scooters will go down quick. Any scooter that you can fix and ride comfortably, you can try doing deliveries on, so long as your area is made for it. If you don't see bicycle couriers in your area, you probably cannot do it on a scooter. So obviously the more you spend, the better scooter. The less time you spend in the shop, the more time you spend on the road. So any scooter is fine, you just gotta try it. Great Ocean Road Fishing Videos. That's his channel, you should, I guess check it out. I think I've checked it out before, I'll check it out. Do I get sore legs when I stand on the scooter? Sore spelled S A W, but I assume you mean sore. Do I wish I had? Do I wish I had a seat? I try to seat. These scooters are not really great with seats unless you get something really fabricated. Otherwise, they get loose. Uh, do I get sore feet? Do I get sore legs? Sort of. Not while I'm riding. I never feel anything while I'm riding. But I have trouble with my feet. As I'm 50 freaking years old, doing three or four hours on the scooter, four, five, six days a week, especially when I was full time last year, nothing really hurts except in the morning time. My Achilles heels, the backs of my, like the backs of my ankles, you call it, the Achilles heels is super tight. And sometimes my feet hurt, but, you know, I counterbalance that by being, working out as much as I can and uh, doing a lot of yoga, flexibility training, strength training. But yeah, I got sore legs, not sore legs so much, but sore feet. My hamstrings, my quads, everything is pretty good, but I got sore feet for sure. Alrighty, that's that. If you have any more questions about deliveries, scooters, anything else, just pop it in the comments. You know, I'll always reply by hand for sure. I'm Yogi Steve. This is ESA, the Electric Scooter Academy, videos about high-powered scooters. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video if you liked it, and leave a comment down below. This is Bishop, your pain in the ass. Love you.